All right, so how do we find the correct values of theta to minimize our cost function j of theta? We're going to use a search algorithm that takes some initial guess for theta and iteratively changes theta such that j of theta keeps on getting smaller and smaller until it converges to some minimum value. This algorithm is called gradient descent. So it starts with some initial theta and we're going to update our values of theta according to this equation. For each theta j, our new theta j is going to be equal to that same theta j minus some constant alpha times the derivative of j of big theta with respect to that theta j. Note the derivative here, d d theta j of j of theta. If you're less familiar with calculus, what we're doing here is we're calculating the rate of change of j with respect to this particular theta j. We're going to simultaneously perform this update for every single theta j in our big theta. That is every single theta j in our entire set of thetas. This alpha here is a parameter of the algorithm called the learning rate. What we're essentially saying in this equation is, hey, in the space of all possible values of theta, what's the tiniest step I can make in a certain direction such that I will make the value of j of theta smaller? I'm not going to go into the calculus here, but based on our cost function j of big theta and the dependence it has on all of these various theta j's, if we were to actually perform this differentiation, the actual equation that we'll use to update our theta values is this. Theta j is equal to theta j plus alpha, the sum from 1 to m, of y superscript i minus h of x superscript i. And all of this we're going to multiply by x sub j superscript i. So basically what we're saying is, we'll take our existing level of theta, we'll increment just a little bit by this learning parameter, we're going to sum up the difference between our observed y value and our predicted y value. And for a particular value of theta j, remember these j's are running from 0 to n, and these could be our input parameters like height or weight. We're going to multiply this difference times the actual x value here. You may be wondering how we set a value for the learning parameter alpha. A rigorous discussion is beyond the scope of this class. But the important thing to note is that the smaller learning rates will cause the algorithm to take longer to converge on the optimal theta values, since you're taking smaller and smaller steps down this curve. Larger values of alpha can converge more quickly, but you're more prone to skip over the cost function's minimum values. This can cause j to increase rather than decrease when you update these theta values. The best way to make sure your alpha is suitable is simply to keep track of your cost function's value as you iteratively update it, and just make sure that it's always going down. If it's not, your learning rate's too high.